This is my shop buddy. My shop buddy, Wicket. How's it going, bud? All right, so um, I wanted to do a quick video of uh, something that I've made in the shop that has helped me out tremendously, and I thought maybe it might help out some of you. There's been a need um, for me to cut some really thin strips um, in the past for cutting boards, like something like this. Uh, for splines when I'm making picture frames, etc. And I've never really been comfortable bringing the fence really close to the blade and pushing the stock through. Um, all kinds of things can go wrong, but uh, mainly if you don't have a good um, hold on the material down, then it can shoot back at you and it can just shoot out like a bullet if you're not careful. So um, what I have devised is a, uh, a jig to help me do so. Now some of you may say, well, all you really need is a crosscut sled. Well, yes and no. Um, I have a crosscut sled, like so. Now if I was cutting thin strips uh, off of something like this, um, then that would work just fine, right? Because, let me put my push sticks over here, I can hold on to the material, I can clamp the material down, and then I can push it through safely. Not a problem. And then I can get, um, you know, with a stop block here, I can get very consistent with thin strips. That's fine. But that's not always the case. You don't always have a big block of material where you can do that. So, for instance, um, the last thin strips that I've had to cut were off of this piece of walnut. And now some of you may say, oh, well, just make them off cuts. And by that, what I mean is you can put this right up to the blade, um, and then you can factor in the width of the stock, the width of your blade, and the width of your cutoff, and then adjust your fence accordingly, and then push your stock through safely, and then the piece that comes off, let's say it's this, the piece that comes off will be 1 8 inch. Well, yes. However, when you need precise, exact, consistent widths, this technique will fail you. You will not be able to maintain exact consistency because you have to adjust the fence every time you make a cut because your stock gets thinner. So that's not going to work. So here's what I came up with. Um, by no means am I saying it is the end-all be-all solution for this. It is just simply something that has worked for me. Um, this is what it is. It's ugly. It's grotesque looking. It's not going to win any beauty awards, um, but it works. And function over form in this case, so I'm happy with it. And the way it works, it's just a 2x4 that has been ripped down to exactly 3 inches. So I set my fence at 3 inches, 3 inches exactly, and this should slide right through just barely okay so what I need to do then if I want to make three and uh, one eighth inch cuts that's gonna leave me with one eighth inch strips so I would position my fence at three and one eighth just like so and this one eighth inch strip that I cut before ought to fit right in there so just like just like so okay now what that means is I can adjust this back uh, screw here that loosens and I can move this in and out based on how big the piece of stock is that I'm going to be pushing through. This will catch it and that will help me be able to push it through. This up here is a hold down because once I started using this technique, I noticed that as my material is getting through, the rotation of the blade would start to walk this piece up and it would get to the point where it could have potentially been thrown back at me. I didn't want that to happen, so I made uh, this little clamp. I experimented with some other ideas of holding down the material, but everything else uh, tended to apply pressure on the material in a way where it was actually pushing it into the blade. Um, and as you may know, you don't want anything to be pushed into the back part of the blade because 
uh, you will experience kickback. So the way that this works, uh, just a wing nut here to adjust uh, how far in and out this needs to be. And then here's another screw here to adjust uh, the height, whether it needs to, to go up or down. Oh, I got it a little, little bit tight. Oh, no, it was up all the way. So um, either up or down. And you can twist it if you need to, uh, to um, touch it just by an edge, or if you can get the full, uh, the full uh, width on there as a hold down, um, that works as well. So as a demonstration, why don't we set this up for a 1 8 inch strip. Let me uh, shorten up the back so, I, so there's just a tiny smidge uh, protruding off of there and that's what's going to catch onto my material and be able to push it through. And as for the hold down, um, I put my stock up next to it and make sure that it just scoots under there just ever so barely and then I push this down on top of it and then tighten it up. Just like that. Okay, so now I should be able to adjust my blade height and push this thing through the saw safely. Let's give it a shot. Let me get my push sticks. Here we go. Had the bottom piece of this break off, and that was offered a loud pop, didn't it? But, um, anyways, it worked, and we have one eighth inch. And I think I have some calipers around here somewhere. Well, we'll just kind of hold it up here, and we'll see if it looks to be one eighth. That is spot on the money, one eighth inch. So. This is a technique that has worked for me, and it may work for you. It's really easy to put together. Just thought you would enjoy it. And uh, if you didn't enjoy it, well, frankly, I don't really care. All right? So take it easy. Bye-bye.